Let's start with the absolute simplest shape you can make in OpenSCAD, a cube. Dimensions are given as X, Y, and Z. So let's say 15 by 15 by 5 high. Now right off the bat, you'll notice that the corner of the cube is put in the origin point where X and Y intersect. For the most part, that's going to make things more difficult down the line. So I like to come back and say that I want it in the center, like that. Okay, so let's say we want to pop a hole right through the center of this. The first step would be to create a cylinder. And now for the height, we want it to be a little bit bigger than the cube itself. So we'll say six. Diameter can be anything, but we'll do three. And just like the cube, we're going to make sure it is on the center. So now we have the cube and the cylinder, but they're both solid objects. What we want to do is subtract one from the other. For that, we use the difference function. Now you see that the cylinder has been subtracted from the cube. So let's take this a step further. What if we didn't want the hole to be in the center, we wanted to move it off to one of the sides? To do that, you use the translate function. So we can say translate 5 millimeters x, and you see it goes right off to the edge there. So now what if you wanted to make two holes, say to mount this plate to something? The obvious way would be to just copy this whole thing and change that 5 to a negative 5. And now you have two holes on either side. Now in such a simple example, this is fine. The cylinder is just one line. But imagine if you had something more complicated. It'd be a waste of time and effort to keep typing the same code over and over. So this is where we can use the module functions. So I'll copy the code used to generate the cylinder and then paste it up here in a new module called screw hole. So now anywhere we place screw hole, that code will run. It doesn't look any different, but in this case, that's exactly what we're going for. Now up until this point, we've been using hard-coded values for everything. And there's nothing wrong with that, but the ability to use variables is really one of the greatest strengths of OpenSCAD. So if we come up here and start creating variables for some of these sizes, you can see how easy it is to make changes and adjust things down the line. So just like before, nothing appears to have changed. That's because we're using the same values for all the dimensions. But the fact that they're variables now makes it a lot easier to change them if we need to. So if we go up to the width, we can simply make it 10. Or we can make it 20. All without changing any of the code in the actual object. But there's a problem. Let's say we change the length. The screw holes don't move because they've been positioned a set value from the center point. But let's imagine we wanted them to move as the piece got bigger or smaller. That's where a little bit of math comes in. The basic idea is that we want to position the screw hole in relation to the outside edge of the plate and not the center point. So to do that, we have to find the edge. So let's say we move that to one half of the plate length. That does get us to the edge, but obviously isn't exactly what we're looking for. So let's subtract 
an offset value. And let's do the same thing for the other side. But of course, negative. Now if we change the length of the plate, we'll see that the screw holes remain a fixed distance from the edge. That distance itself can also be changed. Even in such a simple example, we can see how the use of variables makes it much easier to tweak a model until you get it exactly where you want it. So it makes sense to use them as much as possible. Here we'll replace that hard-coded diameter with a variable, which would allow us to change the size of the screws used with just a simple adjustment. This also shows how using a module for the screw hole saved us from having to change the variable in multiple locations. Now that we've seen how the use of variables allows you to change an object without having to really change an object, the next question is how do we get this working with something like Thingiverse Customizer which would allow an end user to change the object without having to know how it's actually put together. And the simple answer is we already have. All we have to do is enable the customizer view and we can see that the variables we used have automatically populated up here and can be tweaked without having to ever look at the actual code itself. You can simply enter a new screw size and they will be applied as soon as the file is saved. Now if we want to make things a little bit easier for the end user, we can also give them specified ranges. So let's say we wanted to allow this, the length of the plate to be between the original 15 millimeters and say 50. Now you'll see the length has turned into a little slider that can easily be adjusted and you can see how the length changes in real time naturally we can expand that same concept to all of the variables in the model give them all acceptable ranges that we know are within reason and aren't likely to break anything And now they've all been broken out into handy little sliders that allow anyone to change the model without actually having to know how it was put together. Now being that this was just a short demo, obviously these are only the absolute basics of OpenSCAD. But by combining these core concepts and functions, you can actually create some incredibly complex objects. Hopefully this quick video can sort of demystify the open SCAD workflow and maybe get you excited about the possibilities of truly parametric modeling.